students, we are more than grateful to have you today in Google Day TV Classroom. This is Kanyike Francis, and I'll be taking you through a topic called curve sketching. All right? Now, this topic of curve sketching is a topic, of course, that is found in Paper 1 Mathematics. I think you understand that. It's a topic that brings about, that is under the applications of differentiation. All right? Remember, this is brought to you by eLearning Teachers Project Uganda in conjunction with Google Day TV. All right? Now, I would like to ask you kindly, grab your papers or your book, get your pens ready, your calculators, as well as the, um, something to use, right? All right? And then we get to start our lesson today. I want to remind you this is a very, very, very important topic. All right? We need to grab these marks one by one. All right? So as we move on to start this topic of curve sketching, we're going to be like we are picking mangoes. Pick one mango, put it in a basket, we keep it there. Pick another one slowly by slowly. Welcome to our classroom. Please feel comfortable. Make sure that you wash your hands very well. We are in uh, a very, very tough season. We don't want to debate about it, but we would like to advise that you wash your hands, be, uh, keep a distance, and make sure that you are really, 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 really safe. We need you back in class. We need you back in school, very healthy and okay. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to take you through the topic of curve sketching. All right? Now, as you can see, we are looking at the topic of curve sketching. Curve what? Repeat with me. The topic is curve sketching. All right. I know you're getting it. Now, just like everything else we normally do in life, there's something called fundamental steps. Everything we do in mathematics calls for a fundamental step. Are we together? Now, there are seven fundamental steps we need are you getting me? Seven very, very important steps that we need to take if we are going to do or be able to handle the topic of curve sketching. Now, we came up or we designed a mnemonic, a short form that simply or simplifies uh, the seven steps. The mnemonic is air tinks. Repeat with me. Air tinks. Repeat with me. Air tinks. You can see we have air, I, R, all right? That is air. Then we have T, N, C, and S. My dear students, the moment you can be able to grasp these seven concepts, this topic will be no more. You will get all the 12 marks you need in section B at A level mathematics paper one. All right. Allow me to introduce to you each of these symbols. You see, in air things, A stands for asymptotes. All right? In this topic, there are three major asymptotes we're going to be talking about. All right? Uh, one of them is going to be called the vertical asymptotes. There are three major types of asymptotes, and the first one is going to be the vertical asymptotes. Asymptotes. Very good. The next one we'll talk about again under asymptotes will be what we call the hori. I hope that someone is already getting it. All right? Of course, when you talk about something vertical, hey, there is something what? Hmm? All right. Something horizontal. That's perfect. We write the word horizontal. Yes, we expect, ladies and gentlemen, to get the horizontal asymptotes. All right? There's some other kind of asymptote that is also very important for us. Uh, it's called slanting asymptotes. Slanting asymptotes. Now, these ones here are special asymptotes. They're not like vertical or horizontal, as we will see. They're also given another name. Who can guess that name? Hmm? Can you guess that name that can also be used to represent or to mean slanting asymptotes? Do you get the name? Good. The name, as you've said, is oblique. If we don't call them slanting asymptotes, we call them oblique asymptotes. That's perfect. Now you're getting there. Remember, we are breaking down the topic. And then we'll be handling each of these ones as they appear. 
I want us to move slowly. I want us to move step by step, picking our good mangoes and putting them in a basket, such that at the end of the day we'll be able to sell them and get a good, 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 good yield. Are we together? Thank you so much. Let us move steadily to another one. You see, in our air tanks, you also need to understand that the second fundamental feature, the second fundamental step you need to take is you must be very good at determining what you call intercepts. Obviously, we're going to talk about them as well. But there are majorly two intercepts. The Y intercept, the Y what? Intercept, uh-huh. And can you guess another one? Is it Z? Hmm? <laughs> Someone is saying it, it's P. No, we cannot have P intercepts here. They are going to be called, uh-huh, the X what? Intercepts. You see, when you're handling the topic of curve sketching, huh? it is basically in two planes, X and Y plane. That vertical plane and the horizontal one. All right? So that's because we have two. We're going to be using the Y to represent the vertical axis and the X represent the horizontal <laughs> horizontal axis. Very good. We'll talk about those as well. Then from do and after understanding the intercepts, we will also launch now. All right? We will launch and look for the restricted region. Now, these are regions where the curve hmm, passes. Oh, no, please. No, 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 no. It's the region, as you hear the word restricted. You know when you're restricted, it means you're hindered. You're not supposed to pass there. It's a restricted area. So the region where the curve is not allowed, is not permitted to pass, is known as the restricted region. All right? We can also call it the region where the curve does not lie. Or the region where the curve is discontinuous. Repeat with me. The region where the curve is discontinuous. Very good. The region where the curve is restricted, not allowed to move. Are we together? And also, a region that, has, is, is, that is undefined. We'll talk about those ones the more. All right? But here, we'll talk about the, this is when we're going to bring in a simple aspect of what we're going to be calling the discriminant B squared minus 4AC. So we're going to be learning how do we use the discriminant B squared minus 4AC. All right? Very good. I'm so, so happy that I have such a beautiful class. I know you're paying attention. I know you're grabbing these ones. Please don't forget to take your notes. Don't forget, this is Google TV with the e-learning teachers project. And this is Mr. Kanike Francis. We are moving through a topic called curve sketching. Beautiful. Now, after understanding the region of restriction, remember there is such a beautiful relationship between the restricted region and the turning points. Are we together? So, after learning this one here, we also now will launch into learning the turning points. Are we together? Very good. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, in this case, you're going to find that we're going to also be having three. All right? We'll talk about them as well. Three turning points. You must be able to determine each of them to tell us how we get all of them. All right? But the major thing we need to understand, by the way, is the condition they are in. All right? So, we, before we even talk about the types of turning points, all right? We need to first know that this one now has got what we call a condition. Just like we talked about uh, the restricted region having these conditions here. For each of these parts we're going to do, there is going to be a condition. Are we together? So here you need to master. Remember before you even forget. Here we have so many methods. But the major condition is that the derivative dy by dx must be a zero. All right. <laughs> now someone is asking, now sir, what do you mean by dy by dx? Don't worry. Don't worry, be comfortable. We're going to do all these things. We're only laying down um, an, a foundation for you. So you know what we're going to be doing. All right? Let's move together now. You see, every time you determine the turning points, you're going to get as a point. That is either um, 2, 3, or a half, negative 4, 
you know? It's a point. It's a coordinate. Now, we may need to determine the nature of the turning what? Point. Are we together? The turning point. These two move together. Should the curve have, or if a curve has got a turning point, or a turning point, are we together? Then the turning point must be known in terms of the nature. Is it a maxima? Is it a maxima? Or is it a minima? A minima? Or it is a point of inflection. A point of infle inflection. We are going to talk about these ones as we talk about again the turning points. Determine the turning points and you also be able to state the nature of the turning points. Beautiful. Alright? Now, after knowing this step for the nature, we will now go into what's called the critical values. Now, the critical values basically are values, are values of what? Are values of X. Alright? Now, there is going to be something we will be doing. You see, under here we talk about critical values as well. But now here, we will be talking about the critical values of the general question. Alright? The general question. This one will be having critical values, but they're only for the restricted region, all right? But there will have the critical values for the general equation. Now I'm seeing that everyone is paying attention. I like the fact that now you're watching very well, and I think you're paying attention. Put on a smile. Please don't be so gloomy, all right? This is beautiful mass, all right? Now when we get all of these ones here, we will be able to do what now? To sketch. To sketch our curves perfectly and reasonably. Are we together? Now, should we now start slowly by slowly? After knowing all of these ones now, we know what is going to be done in each of them. I want us to go and look at each of these seven aspects. I'm so sure that by the time we finish the five of them, you'll be able to attempt any number under curve sketching. Clap for me. <laughs> okay. Now, allow me to take you through one of them, slowly by slowly. Are we together? Are you with me? Very good. We are going to start, as we hear in our air things, all right? Air things, we start with A, all right? Remember, in most cases, all right? In most cases, they will give you steps to follow. A question will be set, given a curve, so, 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 then uh, one, Determine the equation of the asymptotes. All right? Then ask maybe for the turning points. Or to show that the curve has got turning points or not. And then we'll just say sketch. You see, in such a question, they've told you what to do. However, they've left out a number of these other aspects. I want you to know that any complete number under curve sketching, you must have all the seven features. Okay? Now, let's go through quickly, and then we see how best we can do. I don't want you to be, you know, to move. I can see one of you is already moving out. Please don't move. Let's go. All right? Let's move together and do this one quickly. Are we together now? Very good. Let's start off with our beautiful asymptotes. Asymptotes. Okay? Now, an asymptote, an asymptote is a straight line. Repeat with me. What's an asymptote? We are saying it is a straight line that continuously, yeah, that does what? Continuously approaches a given curve, but does not meet it at finite distances. I repeat, an asymptote, all right, is a straight line that continuously approaches a curve or a given curve, but does not meet it at finite distances. I hope now you've got it. And remember, we must understand that an asymptote is drawn as a dotted line. Why? Because asymptotes are special lines. You're going to see as we sketch, all right, that the asymptote is going to be so, so beautiful. Now look here, members. You see, if it's a vertical asymptote, all right, then we're going to have, if we, ha we say we have this as our uh, plane, all right, 
All right? Of course, we understand this is our y-axis and this is our x-axis. Now, when we talk about a vertical asymptote, okay, it's going to be drawn using a ruler because it's a straight line. Uh-huh. So if it's vertical, it's going to be dotted. Please don't forget that one very well. All right? If the value at this point was a value, say, A, then we're going to call it x equal to what? Equal to A. Okay? Now, should we have another positive asymptote? We will draw it there. But sometimes you can also have one that is what? That is in a negative x what? Axis. And this one can be maybe say so you have negative A. Negative A. So our next vertical asymptote can be drawn passing through the value of x equal to negative A. And down here we indicate x equals negative A. Are we together? You should remember that you can either write this one here, down here, or you can even print it up there. Either way. But one thing I want us to understand is that when we talk about a vertical asymptote, that one must be drawn as a dotted straight line. Are we together? If we go to the next one, which is horizontal asymptote, when you're drawing it, it must be drawn like, you know, as a dotted what? A dotted line. If this was the case, and this was y equal to maybe say, um, still maybe a, we name it y equal to what? a. Whenever you draw the asymptote, it must be named, it must be given a name. Are we together? Very good. So these are lines that are straight and dotted. Are we getting the idea? Now, when we talk about the slanting one, now this one here. Huh? <laughs> this one is very, very important. Look, supposing we have, we have our axis drawn like this, all right? We already know that this is which axis? The x-axis. Come on. Is this on the x-axis? Uh-huh. Very good. It is the y-axis. All right? Automatically, this is it. Then remember, all the values along that path hmm, are positive. Now, when we go down below, the origin below are zero here, the ones we're going to have are going to be what? Are they going to be positive? Ha. They are very good. Negative. If we had A, B, C in that kind of a case, then this is going to be negative A, negative B, negative C. Are we together? Therefore, because we're moving like this, this is going to be called the negative y axis. All right? Then, this side we have the positive x axis, and of course, this is going to be negative x what? axis. Labeled in the same way. Remember that each of these ones must be of the same width. All right? You can't draw one that is here. And then no, 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 no. They must be equal in width. The same will apply this side. We have a mark here and a mark there. Are we together now? So if this is true, maybe I have x1 here, x2, x3, like that. And then negative x1, negative x2, like that. A slanting asymptote may, one, pass to the origin or not. All right? I can have one using a ruler, okay? Using our ruler. You don't forget that one there. You put your ruler nicely like this one here, and you draw. If it passes through the origin, or if it is going through the origin, then it must be drawn in this sense. That is slanting. It's neither vertical nor horizontal. It is what? Slanting. And it can either be moving in, an up, in, up, in, in the positive gradient or in the negative gradient. Or we can even draw it, uh, it may be uh, going through, say, another point like this one here. Please look at this one very, very well. Okay? It may, it, it, it may pass this way. It may also pass the other way. Okay? So it's very, very important for us to understand that when we talk about a starting asymptote, it's neither vertical no horizontal that makes it very very special ladies and gentlemen we're going to be talking about these ones now each of them and how we can determine all right we've just seen how we can present them now we're going to talk about each of them and how we can determine each of them are we together 
Very good. Let's now move on to determining the different asymptotes. Okay? Very nice. Now, okay, what I want us to understand is, uh, let us think, let me, let me first clean this one here quickly, and then we'll be able to know how do we get these values? You see, I have been using values like A, you know, B, C, the values that are not even known. All right? So we're going to look at cases where the values are now known. We've been able to determine them, and therefore we can be able to also handle them perfectly. All right? Very well. Let's move on and see how best we can determine the different asymptotes. The different asymptotes. We are starting with the magical vertical asymptotes. Are you ready for them? Are you really ready? Now, this is the moment, I, even if it means that you don't breathe, eh, to be able to pick this one. Please don't. I want you to put everything you, you have aside and pay maximum attention. It's very, very important. You know why it's important? Because a vertical asymptote will appear in any number set on curve sketching. Yeah? The vertical asymptote must be there. Remember, you're dealing with curve sketching of rational functions. Section B, pure mathematics, advanced level. Okay? Now, let's start off quickly with our vertical asymptotes. Vertical, vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes. You see, the vertical asymptote can be only one, or they can be more than one. We put this S in brackets to indicate that it, depending on the question set, you may either be able to find one asymptote, that is vertical, or more, depending on the question set. All right? I would like to take you through how we find this one here. You see, the vertical asymptote, by definition, is a value of x is a value of x that makes y tend to infinity the value of x that makes y tend to infinity that one there is known as the vertical asymptote the vertical asymptote all right and if in a question you would like to find the vertical asymptote, let me, give, let me put one number here. For instance, if we have a number like a curve y, okay, equals x minus uh, 9, all right, all right, then you can help me, we can just make it one together, all right? Let's make it together. Mm -hmm. Then give me one. Of course, we know this is x, uh huh. What do you think I'm going to put here? Yes. You want a positive? Very good. Plus. All right? Uh-huh. What can we put there? Anything. Just think of any number. This is mathematics made easy. All right? Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, we have a number like what? You said two. Very good. Two. Okay? Now, we are dividing this one by what? By another set of linear denominators. All right? Now we have what? We're going to have x here. Mm -hmm. We can now use a plus. This is choice, you know? We can now use the plus. We can say x plus what? x plus 1. And maybe x, maybe minus, minus 5. All right? Now we have generated a rational function. And ladies and gentlemen, this can be a question they ask. They say, sketch the curve given by y equals this. And as a student now, you know you must find the vertical asymptote. But remember we say the vertical asymptote is the value of x that makes this y tend to infinity. My dear students, whenever y tends to positive or negative infinity, the denominator becomes zero. The denominator becomes zero. Why? Because our y is turning to positive or negative infinity. So in this sense, for the vertical symptom, you don't have to simplify. Take it as it is. You just come and say, for vertical symptom, uh-huh, as y does what? Remember the condition. I told you each of these has got conditions which we must 
be able to really pick. Now the condition for vertical asymptote is that the y must be turning to positive or negative infinity. Beautiful. You guys are very good. And I've said the moment our y turns to positive or negative infinity, the denominator becomes You've already forgotten. You said six. <laughs> no! The denominator becomes someone from Iganga tell me. The denominator becomes very good. You're brilliant. The denominator becomes a zero. Therefore, in this aspect, since our y is turning to positive negative infinity, the denominator, the denominator, all right? must become or must be equal to zero. That's a beautiful condition. We've said that for vertical asymptote, one, there are values of x, not y. There are values of x. And these values of x do one job. For them, they make the, the our y tend to infinity. Now here comes a mistake. You see, in most cases, most of us advanced level learners, we tend to forget that the infinity can either be positive or, very good, negative. Please don't forget these signs. They're very, very, very important. Say so why? Tending to positive or negative infinity. Beautiful. And we're saying as y does this job, then it, of course, makes our denominator become a zero. It becomes zero. So, if this is the case, we're going to have what? We're going to pick our denominator. First of all, how many uh, factors do we have? How many do we have in the denominator? Of course, we have x plus 1, all right? And also, we have x minus 5, all right? I expect us to remember that this is a rational function in which this x minus 9 and the x plus 2, e, oh, these two represent the new me, numerator. Beautiful. And these ones are for the denominator. So our interest is with the denominator, not the numerator. Don't look there anymore. All right? Look at the denominator. All right. So we pick our denominators, the linear denominators. We have x plus what? Plus, uh-huh, plus one, very good. Followed by what? Followed by x minus five. These are the denominators, right? And therefore, they must be equal to zero. Very good. And as we did at all level, remember this one here. We called them factors because normally we get them after factorizing. All right? Now, this one here, you remember we used to pick, we would say either this one equals zero or this one equals zero. Do not forget that one at least. So we come and write a beautiful word. Either, all right, either, mm -hmm, x plus what? x plus? Good. X plus 1, don't forget, we begin with the first bracket, equals 0. In this case, you're going to just say such that, all right? Such that X equals what? You know at a level, we can say plus 1 minus 1 equals, you know? But then now we know that when the positive number crosses the equal sign to go to the other side, it is found there nothing, remember? It becomes a negative. It is po positive, good. And when it crosses the equal sign, it becomes a negative. All right. It is more like when you're happy at being somewhere. And then they say, now move to another place you don't like. Of course, you become very sad. The same thing happens to the numbers. This is happy one. It is positive one. But we won't take it the other side and it doesn't want to go. What does it do? It becomes very sad. So when it becomes sad, it means it changes. It was positive. It becomes a, ne a negative. Beautiful. So we're going to have our negative one. Are we together? Is it okay? Are we going well? Very good. Now, let's move on. You see, we had two of them. Now, we've taken this one here equal to zero. We've seen when we handle that one, we get negative 
one. All right? Now, let's also say or, or, or. Either this one is zero or our x minus what? Is it x minus nine? <laughs> Yeah? No, we, we say we take this one here, isn't it? So we have x minus 5. So we have x minus 5 equal to 0, such that now this time around you will see that our 5 was sad. It is negative. It doesn't want to be this way. Meaning, therefore, that when you pick the negative 5 and take it the other side, automatically it becomes happy it rejoices all right i saw some of you when they announced that you're going to have these uh, 32 days most of you jubilated you are very happy you're going back home uh-huh have you seen yeah things change so the same thing is happening to what to mr negative five mr negative five is going on a journey he has to cross the equal signs and when he crosses the equal signs, of course, Mr. Negative 5 becomes a positive. So in that case, our x becomes what? Our x becomes positive 5. You understand that zero means nothing. All right? And when the negative 5 goes the other side, it finds there nothing. If it finds there nothing, it means it's going to be by itself. All right? So ladies and gentlemen, remember you're watching Google the TV. E-learning teacher's project. Mr. Kanike Francis, advanced level mathematics. Do not forget that one there. Now, from here, you're going to draw your conclusion. All right? You're going to say that, therefore, x equal to negative what? 1. We began with that one, isn't it? Uh-huh. And what? And x equal to what? 5. All right? Uh-huh. Are because there are two the vertical asymptotes. Very good. That is the conclusion you normally have to put every step, the condition, and the conclusion. All right. Good. Are uh, the vertical? Are uh, the vertical asymptotes? Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, my dear students. This one here handles two situations. You say there are cases when they say find or determine the equation of their symptoms. Determine the equations of their symptoms. These are the equations of the asymptotes. The equations of the vertical asymptotes. If they say that, you say are the equations of the vertical asymptotes. Are you getting me now? Very good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we do if you want to find the vertical asymptote. I want us to try another number as well. All right? And you're going to teach me, you're going to teach me how we find the vertical asymptote. Suppose in the examiner, all right, brought number, this number and said, given that, this is number number two, you're going to teach me, given that y equals x, equals what? Equals what class? X. Very good. Into X minus 3. All right? X minus 3. Over. All right? Over, we have X minus 1. And X minus what? Hey, minus 4. Teach me. Uh-huh. I'm listening. How do you find the vertical asymptote? You want to find the equations of the vertical asymptote. First, you understand we have two of them in the denominator. What do we do? Hmm? Yes. You said what? Oh, someone is saying that we say that as x tends to... Is it x that tends to? That's a good try anyway. Hmm, I'm listening to you now. Yes. Okay, you're saying that we say that what? That as, uh-huh, as y does what? Very good. As y tends to, eh? this one means tends to. Please continue, uh-huh. Tends to what? Oh, someone has said, ten, has said tends to infinity. Is that true? That y must tend to infinity? Yes, Nakanwaj. What are you saying? Oh, yes. You're saying it must be plus or negative. Nakanwaji, you're very bright. 
You can clap for yourself now. Okay? Yes, it is positive or negative infinity. Yes, Okum. Uh huh. What are you saying? Where, where are you from? Oh, I'm seeing Okum from Jinja. Okum is saying that now we get the what? Yes? The denominator? Very good. He is saying we get the denominator. Uh huh. Please, Okum, teach me. That's what? Equals. Oh, Okum is saying that the denominator must be equal to one class. Is that correct? Is it correct that the denominator must be one? I'm seeing someone from Nakasongola here. You're saying what? He's, he's wrong. Okay, what is right then? Tell me. Uh huh. Oh, yes. She's saying that if y tends to positive or negative infinity, she has said, I'm only reporting what you're giving me anyway, and the parents are there to judge and see whether you're right, whether you're good students who are really paying attention. All right? This is classroom brought to you right at the comfort or in the comfort of your home. Now remember, she has just said that no, 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 no. She said no, 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 no. It must be a what? A zero. Uh, if I had a word of rewarding, I would reward you. You're such a brilliant student. All right? Now let's move on together. Yes. Now, uh-huh. What do we do next? You see, we are saying that number is equal to what? Zero. What do we do next now? We are going to pick the elements, that are the factors in the denominator. The linear factors in the denominator. So we have what? Mm -hmm. X minus 1 and X minus what? X minus 4. Brilliant. You members are very, very good, really. Okay? Remember, we are determining the vertical asymptote of a given curve. And we are saying it's very important. Why? Because every question on curve skating, for as long as they are rational functions, for as long as they appear as fractions, must have a vertical asymptote. All right? Now let's move on. Yes. What else do we do now? Oh, well, we say either. Okay. Let's write either. Mm -hmm. Either what now? Either. Oh, someone is saying either x minus 4 equal to 0. Members, is, is this person right really? Is he right? Yes, because irrespective of where you start from, either you start from x minus 4 or x minus 1, anywhere you can start is you're very, very correct. Uh-huh. What do we get? Good. Very good. Someone writes and says that we get x equal to what? Equal to negative 4? No. It is positive what? 4. All right? Why? Because the 4 was negative, And it crossed the equal sign to become positive. When it becomes positive, and it has crossed the equal sign, and it has found nothing there, because there was a 0, we have this beautiful expression given. Thank you so much. Clap for yourself on that. Very good. Let's move on. Someone also said that our next step is to say or. Or. Okay? Uh, you can do this one now. Mm -hmm. What do you get? You have what? Good. You have x. Hmm? x minus what? Minus 1 equal to what? 0. That's amazing. That's very, very, very much amazing. And what do you get now? What do we get now? Uh-huh. We get x equal to 1. Why? Because our negative 1 crossed and went to become a positive. Do we stop here? Class? Do we end at this point? Of course, no. We don't end at this point. What we do at this point is to conclude and say, therefore, therefore, x equal to 4 and x equal to 1 are the vertical asymptotes of the curve. Are the vertical asymptotes of the curve. One of the common mistakes people do is they don't know how to write the word therefore. Hmm? Like they don't know how to write the symbol for therefore. They end up doing this. They would say, mm-hmm. That one there. And then they go on to say x equal to 4 and x equal to what? 1 are the vertical asymptotes of the curve. Is this symbol representing the therefore? Someone is saying no, 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 no. What does it represent? Yes? Yes, it represents before. It will, be, it will look like you're saying before x was equal to 4 and x was equal to 1. Which is very wrong. This one here must be with one dot on top 
and two dots were down. Now, this is what we need. Therefore, x equals 4 and x equals 1 are the vertical asymptotes of the curve. I hope that now we've understood how to find the vertical asymptote or the vertical asymptotes of the curve. The condition to take home is that y must tend to positive or negative infinity, and that when it does that, our denominator must become a zero. All right? We're going to have a very, very, very uh, short break. We're going to take some little bit of uh, water on suns and sometimes a bit. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about the horizontal asymptote of the curve.